What was it like to your ass kicked by carp? <laughs> so, carp fishing. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Hook, Line, and Paddle. I'm your host, Ben Duchanny, the web editor of Kayak Angler Magazine. Now sometimes things just don't go your way. Conditions change, the fish stop biting, and it kind of sucks to be outside. For this episode, that's exactly what we were dealing with. I traveled farther than I ever have on this season of Hook, Line, and Paddle, and I met up with Chris LeMessure of Great Lakes Kayak Fishing. After picking up Chris in Detroit, Michigan, we drove another four hours up to Beaver Island, took a two hour ferry ride, and finally got to Beaver Island, Michigan which is this tiny little island in the dead center of Lake Michigan. <laughs> we take the ferry across, lots of opportunity to, to get excited and anticipate and, and kind of get pumped up for the fishing that we're about to do. Beaver Island is a really cool little island. It's, it's almost like a coastal island like Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, but set in the North Woods. Dance, <laughs> you don't dance. Jeez. So it's a little buggy, so I'd put my buff on. I think otherwise I would die from <laughs> lack of blood. Now just off the beach of our campsite was crystal clear water. We were in 15 foot of water looking straight down and it looked like it was in two foot of water. We wrap up the first night and we kind of scout some spots. We know where we're going to go. Day one we get up right and early. We head out and uh, in the spot we've scouted out. Launch conditions are, are perfect. Sunny, flat, calm, water slick. Um, start looking for carp and within five minutes we start seeing fish. Oh carp, carp. Now even though I spent a lot of time on my home flats searching for striped bass on the fly, sight fishing for carp is a whole new game. These fish are so finicky and stuck up and pains in the ass. Carp kind of all around, we're getting excited, we're trying to throw stuff at them, um, but after the first couple hours we kind of realize we're not doing something right. We spent hours and hours and hours that first morning pulling around, paddling around, searching for fish. We found plenty of fish and we got multiple shots of these fish, but they were just not cooperating. I think part of that reason is that I was striper fishing for these carp. But really what I should have been doing is just casting, not doing a damn thing after that, and just letting the carp investigate my fly, decide if it wants to eat, and then go from there. So after a tough morning of chasing these carp on the flats with no success, no bites, we say, hey, there's some really cool inland lakes. What about packing up and trying one of those? I just had a pike on two and he broke off. He bit me off clean. Oh my God. Now for day two, we really wanted to get into carp. I mean, that was the whole reason that we drove out here. Go to our first spot and it's kind of wind blowing. The wind is a little different than it. Yeah, but it's forecasted. Yeah, straight at, at us, blowing right at us. So the flats were a little windy. Thanks, brother man. Yeah, thanks, brother man. So we were gonna get pounded all day if we stayed there. So even though we were only on the water for about five minutes, maybe 10, we packed back up, hit the road, and drove only 10 minutes to the other side of the island, to the north side again, same spot as yesterday, and started looking for some carp. Oh, right in front of me. Two fish, two big fish. Kind of spooked him though. We find a couple fish that we can present a fly to, put a short cast in front of them, but just nothing. Not eating, water's really cold, um, really almost about 10 degrees colder than the day before, and I think that changed things dramatically. So not as many fish in this spot as there were in day one, and the ones that are there just aren't eating. Oh, I see three right there. Four, five, six. We kept seeing fish, but again, they were so finicky. After seeing a few fish and, and making a few casts, I mean, only after about an hour, they were gone again. So we, again, we pack everything up and go to an inland lake where we know there's fish. Yeah, I'm not going to a different lake till like seven.
not be a carp on the flats. But I'll take it. There's one thing that you really need to be prepared for if you're going to do a trip like this. You need to bring DEET. I gotta get some sleep. Of course, that was after killing about 250 mosquitoes from inside my truck bed, which is ridiculous. It was so bad that when we were sipping our beer, we had to blow the can before we sipped it. And we were picking mosquitoes out of our dinner while we were cooking it. So much blood, so much blood. Was it worth it? All the ferry rides and long car rides? And yeah, it's still a great trip altogether, right? It's it's a you know a couple hour ride to, to go up north, a two hour ferry ride to get to the island, uh, but still well worth it. Just a beautiful place, super scenic. Um, it feels like on a busy June weekend, you still have the place to yourself. Not only was it really cool to see Beaver Island and go camping with Chris, hanging out with him, but it was also a lot of fun catching those largemouth bass and pike up in the, in the small inland lakes. My name is Ben Shaney. I'm the web editor of Kayak Angler Magazine and the host of Hook, Line, and Paddle. Hoping you paddle forever and fish longer. There are plentiful mosquitoes. I'm not sure if people kayak fish for mosquitoes. If you do, they're everywhere. You can get your limit in, in probably 30 seconds. There's no shortage of mosquitoes on Beaver Island, no matter where you go.